All right, welcome everyone to the last section here in chapter four. This is section five, derivatives of logarithmic and exponential functions. So let's get to it. The first theorem here is I'm going to tell you what the derivative of an exponential function is. And it is, you take the base, whatever that is, in this case our base is a, it looks like, and we're going to do the natural log of a times the function itself. So a to the x. So that's what the derivative of the exponential is. Let's try to use this for a few examples here. So I'm going to calculate out some derivatives. So if I want f prime of x here, well, our base here is 3. So that's going to be the natural log of 3 times the original function. right? So that's going to be 3 to the x. That's all there is to it. Let's try another one. Ooh, a little bit of a combo problem here, right? So 2 to the 5t. So if I want the derivative of this, notice that this is a composition of two functions, right? So 5t is being, that's the exponent uh, that 2 is being raised to. So if I want the derivative of this, I'm going to have to think about the chain rule a little bit. So the outside function is that we have this 2 raised to some power here. So the 2 raised to some power, well, according to this right here, uh, we're going to have the natural log of the base, that's 2, times the function itself. So that's going to be, or we're leaving the inside alone, right? So the chain rule says you take the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of 5t is going to be 5. So if I wanted to, I could simplify this one a little bit. I would maybe write 5 natural logs of 2 times... 2 to the 5t. All right, there's our final answer. And let's try one more of these. This is going to be a pretty short video, I have to admit. We have h of x, and this is 10 times e to the negative x. So notice there's a constant here. That's going to be along for the ride. And so if I did h prime of x here, I want to calculate out the derivative. Again, constant multiple rule, the 10 is just along for the ride. And then I'm going to multiply by, well, okay, now the derivative of, let's see, I have a base e here. So this is going to be the natural log of e times the original thing here, e to the negative x. And, ooh, we have to be careful, right, because there's actually a chain rule going on, right? So the, the inside function is not just x, it's negative x, right? So this is also good so far, right? The base... And then I have the exponent, exponential again, leave the inside function alone. But then the chain rule says I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. And so the derivative of negative x is negative 1. So negative 10, the natural log of e. Let me throw that into our calculator just to make sure. But I think this simplifies down, right? So if I did the natural log of e... Uh, or I guess e to the first in my calculator, we get 1. So yes, the natural log of e is just 1. Uh, so that's nice. And so we get negative 10. This part's just 1. And then we have e to the negative x. So there's our final answer here, negative 10 e to the negative x. And that actually brings up a new theorem here that I wanted to go over. If you have base e, right, because of the fact that this natural log of e is just 1, e to the x has this very special property that if you take the derivative of e to the x, you just get e to the x. So that's pretty nifty here. It's a function who's equal to its derivative. That's pretty remarkable. Not a lot of functions are equal to their derivatives. All right. So this is how we do uh, derivatives of exponents or exponentials. Uh, and you can see that we can start comboing these with some of our other rules. In particular, we saw the chain rule here, but you can think about what if you needed to do a product rule or a quotient rule or something like this. Uh, we can combo these things with our other stuff. Okay, let's move on. Derivatives of logarithms and exponentials, right? So here's the logarithms part. So if I have a log base b of x and I want to take the derivative of this, the claim is that it's going to be equal to 1 over x times the natural log of whatever that base is. Here it's b. So 1 over x times the natural log of b. Let's try using that to calculate out some stuff. So log base 3 of x, if 
I want the derivative, f prime of x, that's going to be equal to 1 over x times, and since the base was 3, this is going to be the natural log of 3. Not so bad. Let's try comboing it with some things, right? So let's calculate out the derivative here, g of t. So now you can see that we have a function, t squared plus t, inside of this logarithm function. So it's a composition of functions. It's going to be the chain rule here. So if I take the derivative of the outside, the outside function is that we have a log base 1 half. So if I take the derivative of this, well, according to our rule up above, this is going to be 1 over, now whatever's on the inside, right, x most of the time, but in this case, it's going to be t squared plus t. And you just leave that alone. And then this is going to be the natural log of 1 half. So this is derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone. Now we multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of t squared plus t, so the 2t plus 1. We have to be careful. Right? If I just wrote it like this, I'd be technically wrong. We need to do parentheses here to signify that we're multiplying by all of it, right? We multiply by the entire derivative. And I forgot back here, I'm going to do g prime of t. Now let's do one more simplification line. So I'm going to have 2t plus 1 divided by t squared plus t times the natural log of 1 half. There we go. That would be my final answer. I'm going to start highlighting. Why not? There's the answer there. I'll highlight this one too even. There we are. Let's try one more. Ooh, this one's even the most complicated so far. Uh, this one, well, first of all, we can see our notation here. It's log base e, right, because of the natural log. Uh, and now we have the square root of x plus 1, right? So let's go ahead and try this. I'm going to go ahead, take the derivative of the outside function. So the outside function is this natural log. So if I wanted to take the derivative of this, it's going to be 1 over x. But inside here, we have root x plus 1, right? So according to the chain rule, we're going to leave this alone, times the natural log of the base. And since the base here in a natural log is e, we're going to have the natural log of e, times the derivative of the inside, right? That's according to the chain rule. And now you can see when I take the derivative of this, yeah, I have another chain rule here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this off to the side here. And I'm going to try to calculate out what is the derivative of the square root of x plus 1. So let's go over here. Derivative of the ooh, square root of x plus 1. Well, let's see. This is going to be the same thing as stuff being raised to the 1 half power, right? So x plus 1 raised to the 1 half, that's the same thing as the square root. And so if I wanted to calculate this using the chain rule, the 1 half would come down. x plus 1 raised to the negative 1 half. And then I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. The inside is x plus 1. So if I took its derivative, well, it's just linear function, which has slope 1. So the derivative of this would be 1 half x plus 1 raise the negative 1 half. There's the derivative. So let's go ahead back to our original function back here. This would be 1 over. Now the natural log of e, we actually just did this, the natural log of e is 1. So this actually simplifies down quite nicely here. And then we found out that the derivative of the square root of x plus 1 is this over here, right? So 1 half x plus 1 raised to the negative 1 half. <laughs> And actually, this negative 1 half power right here, I can simplify this down a little bit farther even. right? So this is going to be 1 over the square root of x plus 1 times a 1 half times a, well, with a negative exponent, remember this is secretly in the denominator. And when you have a 1 half power, that's the same thing as a square root. And so you can see you have the square root of x plus 1 over here and another square root of x plus 1. So these are going to be multiplied together. And when you multiply the square root times another square root, right? these can cancel out. So this is going to be 1 over 2 times x plus 1. So this actually simplifies down quite a lot here. 
which is very nice. And this brings up another special theorem, just like how we had for exponentials, right? If you want the derivative of the natural log, right? The fact that the natural log of e is one means that this part all went away. And right, you just had one over whatever was on the inside. So the derivative of the natural log is one over x. Now, of course, this one was more complicated up here because we had a chain rule, right? It wasn't just the natural log of x. But if you want the derivative of the natural log of x, it's just one over x. All right, so hopefully we have a little bit of practice here, uh, seeing how we can take derivatives of exponentials and logarithms. And we've already seen how we can combo these with the chain rule a little bit, getting a little bit more practice on that. Uh, we can combo this with all sorts of things. Like I mentioned, the product rule, the quotient rule, all these sorts of things. Uh, so we'll get a little bit more practice than that in class. All right, I'll see you then.